Welcome to church today. I hope you had a blessed week. Uh, Psalm 122 verse 1 says, I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord and let us go to the house of the Lord today. Um, I'm going to hand you over to Debbie now who will lead us into our first song of praise and worship.
Good morning Church, I've been asked to read my favourite psalm and that is Psalm 139. O oh Lord, you have examined my heart and know everything about me. You know when I sit down or stand up. You know my every thought when far away. You chart the path ahead of me and tell me where to stop and rest. Every moment you know where I am. You know what I am going to say, even before I say it, Lord. You both proceed and follow me. You place your hand of blessing on my head. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too great for me to know. I can never escape from your spirit. I can never get away from your presence. If I go up to heaven, you are there. If I go down to the place of the dead, you are there. If I ride the wings of the morning, if I dwell by the farthest oceans, even there your hand will guide me and your strength will support me. I could ask the darkness to hide me and the light around me to become night, but even in darkness I cannot hide from you. To you the night shines as bright as day, darkness and light, night are are both alike to you. You made all the delicate inner parts of my body and knit me together in my mother's womb. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvellous and how well I know it. You watched me as I was being formed in utter seclusion as I was woven together in the dark of the womb. You saw me before I was born. Every day my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. How precious are your thoughts about me. Oh God, they are innumerable. I can't even count them. They outnumber the grains of sand. And when I wake up in the morning, you're still with me. Oh God, if only you would destroy the wicked. Get out of my life, you murderers. They blaspheme you. Your enemies take your name in vain. Oh Lord, I shouldn't hate those who hate you. Shouldn't I despise those who resist you? Yes, I hate them with complete hatred for your enemies and my enemies. Search me, O oh God, and know my heart. Test me and know my thoughts. Point out anything in me that offends you and lead me along path of everlasting life. Amen.
morning right so really good to share this morning with you lovely people from swindon god bless you we're gonna have a look at the book of acts today and uh, chapter three and um, we're going to read from the the first verse and um, this is from the the passion translation one afternoon peter and john went to the temple for the three o'clock prayer 
As they came to the entrance called the Beautiful Gate, they were captured by the sight of a man crippled from birth, being carried and placed at the entrance to the temple. He was often brought there to beg for money from those going in to worship. When he noticed Peter and John going into the temple, he begged them for money. Peter and John, looking straight into the eyes of the crippled man, said, Look at us. Expecting a gift, he readily gave them his attention. Then Peter says, I don't have money, but I'll give you this. By the power of the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, stand up and walk. Peter held out his right hand to the crippled man. As he pulled the man to his feet, suddenly power surged into his crippled feet and into his ankles. The man jumped up, stood there for a moment, stunned, and then began to walk around. As he went into the temple courts with Peter and John, he leapt for joy and shouted praises to God. When all the people saw him jumping up and down and heard him glorifying God, they realised it was the crippled beggar that they'd passed by in front of the beautiful gate. Astonishment swept over the crowd, for they were amazed <coughs> at what had happened to them. The um, the Jewish people had it had it all. They had the the temple. They had this amazing building that had taken forty six years to build. It was known as the the place where God dwelt. They lived in the the city that God called His own, Jerusalem, and God's special nation Israel they had everything they had the the temple the rituals the sacrifices the priests the gold the law everything but this man who was in his 40s who'd been crippled from birth he wasn't touched or impacted by any of these the building made no difference to him the services didn't heal his crippled legs the formal worship made no impact on his life and what we see here is a story of Peter and John, two of the two of the apostles coming and healing this man. It's really important that we understand the context that Peter and John came from. This is Acts 3. So they've lived through Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2, where they'd waited for the empowering of the Spirit. And the Spirit had come and they were filled and spoke in other tongues and thousands came to faith. We, we know the story. But in the act, in the end of that chapter, Acts chapter two, <clears throat> around verse forty-two, it talks about them being devoted. They devoted themselves to the apostles' doctrine, to prayer, to fellowship, to the breaking of bread. They devoted themselves, and we've got to understand that this miracle comes out of this context. Is these two men have spent time being filled with the Spirit? They're living a lifestyle of devotion to the Lord. And I have two questions for us to really think about this morning. And the first one is this for you. What are you devoted to? It's really easy in our culture and our society to be devoted to acquiring stuff or to accumulating or to climbing the ladder or to making money. It's really in easy to do that in our culture because that's what all most people around us are seeking to do. And this period of the last few months of lockdown have actually given us an opportunity to reflect and think, what is really important? How important is it to get to Primark for that 41st pair of shoes? How important is it to, to be able to get out to you know this event and that event and the other? How important is it? What are we really devoted to? And the apostles were devoted to prayer, fellowship, the word of God breaking of bread and I think it is a, a real time for us to evaluate and think again about our devotion about the priorities of our lives firstly then what are you devoted to Peter and John are interesting aren't they they they, they meet this man and he, he says to he says to him he said silver and gold have I none but such as I have give I unto thee you'll, you'll notice that that's that's my uh, Sunday school memory uh, of that verse because it's in the AV, the King James. That's where I learned it. Silver and gold, I, I don't have. But what I have, I give to thee. And my second question is my first one is, what are you devoted to? My second one is, what are you full of? What do you have? Peter and John could turn to that man and say, Such as I have, give I unto thee. 
And what they had was the healing power of God's spirit flowing into them and through them. They had an encounter with God. They had a, a lifestyle that meant that they were full of the presence and the power of God. What are you full of? What are we full of? You see, the church at the moment, because there are so many limitations on us, we haven't got many of the things that we're used to, the programs, the services, the buildings. But what do we have? God is still the same. God is still real. God, by his spirit, still wants to enliven us and empower us. And my belief is that as we come gently out of lockdown, as we come into a new situation, that actually God wants his body, God wants his people empowered by his spirit. So that when we meet people in need, when we meet difficult situations actually we're able to say to people i don't have this that or the other but what i have i give to you and what i have is the presence and the power of god the healing power of god the saving forgiving power of god and one of the beautiful things about the church in the last few months has been how the compassion and the kindness has been fantastic reaching out to neighbors and through food banks and other projects that's brilliant but I do believe there's also a call on the church, on us as the body of Christ, to have more than that, to have more than kindness and compassion. Also to have a strengthening and a filling of the power of God. So that when we meet people at that beautiful gate, when we meet people like that, that beggar, actually we have the power of God flowing through us that brings about healing into that man's life. Such as I have, give I unto thee when i when i think about this um this time of lockdown that we've all gone through and i think about the sort of scriptural equivalent i think of the the time for jesus in the in the wilderness and he's there and he's led by the spirit into that place of of lack a place of hunger and of heat and of thirst and of a lack of companionship a very difficult place in lots of ways but Jesus is led there by the spirit and he's there. Yes, he is tempted by the devil and the devil attacks him. But it's also a place where Jesus is empowered. It's a place where he is strengthened and equipped for the ministry that is about he is about to undertake. That's why in Luke chapter four and verse 14, again, the Passion Version, it says this. Then Jesus armed with the Holy Spirit's power. Yes, he comes out of that situation physically weak in a situation of lack, but he comes out spiritually empowered. He comes out of that wilderness experience armed with the Spirit's power. And I believe the Holy Spirit wants us to come out of this period and this phase of our national life as believers, to come out of it empowered and armed with the Spirit's power so that we're able to touch our community with love and kindness and compassion, but also with the power of God. I think it's really important, as I said, that we think about our devotion. What are we focused on? What are our priorities? And I believe there is a call upon us as the body of Christ to make sure that we are in the presence of God, that we use this free time, this wilderness time to be armed to be equipped to be filled with the holy spirit's power ready for ministry i believe god has something to give you something to fill you with i believe he wants you and i to carry more and more of him so that when we meet people in this acts three kind of situation we're able to say to them i don't have silver and gold but what i do have I give to you. So two thoughts, two questions. First one, what are you devoted to? What are your priorities? And the second one, what are you filled with? What are you full of? What do you have to give? Lord, I pray that you will help each of us to draw near to you, to be filled, to be armed with your spirit's power and to live our lives, Lord, with a, with a devotion to you, and with priorities that glorify your name. In Jesus' name. Amen.
Thank you this morning to the worship team and to Susie, Lynn and Alistair. As we go into this week, let's challenge ourselves to be more devoted to the Lord and to be filled daily with his Holy Spirit. We're going to close in prayer with the Lord's Prayer as taken from the message translation. Our Father in heaven, reveal who you are. Set the world right. Do what's best, as above, so below. Keep us alive with three square meals. Keep us forgiven with you and forgiving others. Keep us safe from ourselves and the devil. You're in charge. You can do anything you want. You're a blazing beauty. Yes, yes, yes. Have a great week. See you soon.